Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so as you just heard, looking rather squashed there, <laughs> I'm Mark Priestley. Um, spent a lot of time, nearly 10 years at McLaren in the Formula One team, working as uh, part of their front line, I guess you might call it, as a mechanic and part of the pit stop crew. Forward. Well, first of all, are there any Formula One fans here? Does anybody enjoy Formula One? Yeah, quite a, f a few. Um, I'd just like to know who knows if I'm telling the truth or not before I start, generally. Um, Lewis Hamilton here. Um, you know, every team has two drivers, the pinnacle, if you like, of each team. They're the stars of our sport, and they're what everybody looks up to. Um, they get all the accolades. They, you know, they're the ones spraying uh, sort of champagne around at the end of a Grand Prix when it's gone well. Um, but behind them, of course, there are a lot of other people, and I'm going to talk about right. those. And <laughs> um, but he went on to do great things, and, and after only two years in the sport, at the hands of McLaren, and uh, you know, McLaren had a big part to play in this, Lewis became world champion in 2008, and I was fortunate enough again to be a big part of that, uh, that success. So all of the teams, there are 11 teams in Formula One, they all have hundreds of people, they all have big, impressive, shiny factories with, uh, with incredible resource and facilities inside. And so what is it that sets themselves aside from each other? I guess it's the, the people inside these buildings. It's, it's the people that make up that team and how each team uses those people that gives them the advantage over somebody else. Um, you know, and that stems from the driver. So you want to have the best drivers in your team. You want to have the best engineers, the best designers, the best mechanics, you know, the best people working at the factory coming up with the ideas for the car. They've all got to be the very best. And so teams, you know, some, some teams buy those guys in from other places. Some people nurture them through the business. And look how many people are involved in this pit stop. Uh, you know, there's 20 or so guys, like I say, they're all doing something different. Of course, they all have to do it in, in perfect synchronicity, if you like, to, to make sure that this pit stop goes well. If just one guy gets something wrong, the pit stop's a disaster. So have a little look. And um, to win any race when you're part of that team is an incredible experience. It's something you work so hard for and sacrifice so much for that when you do get to, to win, you get to sort of taste the champagne. It's an, in, an amazing experience. But to do it in Monaco is often just a little bit more special. It's one of those crazy places that we go to once a, once a year. Um, I could never live there, but to dip in and out uh, once a year is, is amazing. You know, we spend our lives, we're, we were mechanics and engineers at the time, and yet we spent that week sort of hopping from one super yacht to the other at various cocktail parties. It's a, it's a wonderful experience. And it makes winning at that, uh, that particular race something a little bit extra special. The drivers feel the same. It's racing around the streets of Monaco. It's, it's all a bit, bit glamorous and a bit special. Now, in this particular race, we were, this again was 2005, so we're in this big championship battle with, um, with Fernando Alonso. And in the Grand Prix, Fernando was in front and we were second with Kimi, about halfway through. And uh, all of a sudden, there was a, a crash somewhere around the circuit. It didn't involve us, but it was significant enough to bring out the safety car. At this point, somebody had to tell Kimi, who, uh, who if anybody knows Kimi Raikkonen, he's a bit of a law unto, him, unto himself. He's... Uh, he likes a swear word or two, and he's, uh, he's not PC, let's say. Um, so somebody had to be brave enough to, to tell Kimmy that we were going to stay out, um, this crazy decision that we were going to not pit. Uh, the team manager did it, and uh, we were sat in the garage, headphones like this, as the barrage of expletives came back across the radio, because uh, he couldn't believe the decision. Two or three times, we had to confirm to him that, you know, we've worked it out, you are going to stay out, everybody else is going to pit, but you're going to stay out. And Kimmy's just sort of firing swear words back at us constantly. At the point where they're about to reach the pits, Fernando, who's in front of us, files into the pit lane as expected. We didn't know even if Kimmy was even going to stop or not at this point, because he's got a tendency to do what he wants. On schedule, um, we had about a 20 second lead. We needed a 21 second lead and we had one more lap. And he put his foot down, he did a great in lap. Uh, came into the pits and, and we as a, as a crew, as a, as a pit crew, did a great job. We did a one of, you know, very, very slick pit stop, went very well. Back out he came and he was neck and neck with Fernando as he came out. And as they went up the hill in Monaco, the, the filter lane brings you out just in front and he just, less than a car length in front, emerged in the front of the Grand Prix. And being Monaco, not being able to overtake, we stayed there for the rest of the, uh, the race, saw it out. And this was the result. Um, so it was a great, a, a great um, example of, of how teamwork, no matter where you are in the team, your role is just as important as everybody else's. And, and it's, a, it's a real key message of, I think, this whole, this whole day. 
certainly sums Formula One up to, to a, great, uh, a great extent. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. And just before you burst into rapturous applause, um, i like to, uh, at this point, as I believe is customary with the kids, take a selfie. So uh, <laughs> jump out your seats, scream and shout, and uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.